For many people outside of his inner circle, Mitchell Feigenbaum seemed somewhat peculiar, a kind of Beethoven of theoretical physics. In fact, in his early career, he was more invested in enjoying harmonies of Beethoven's symphonies and solving crossword puzzles than trying to formulate the mathematical basis of chaotic systems. That is until he started realizing there may be some order behind them. This is the story of a CUNY graduate who became a MacArthur Fellow and his pioneering research in chaos theory. In Van Gogh's painting, there's a very complicated question amongst others that he asks. A garden of flowers. How many do you have to paint to actually give the dissimulation of reality? And the reality is not this precise, repetitive thing. There's always these slight errors. And all of these things are the things of chaotic motion, and they're the properties of complex and complicated objects. Long before coming to these complex and complicated conclusions about reality, Mitchell had to face the harsh reality of his own situation. According to his father, an analytical chemist, and his mother, a public school teacher, the only reality Mitch needed to be concerned about was school. Fortunately for them, their prodigal son, although often rebellious and notoriously uninterested in formal side of education, started showing signs of intellectual prowess at a very early age. By his early teens, he managed to teach himself calculus and piano, and soon after, started scoring unusually high in math and science tests. His talents didn't go unnoticed, and in 1960, at the tender age of 16, he was given a chance to apply them at City College, studying for a degree in electrical engineering. It was here at City College that Mitchell started refining his already advanced mathematical skills and was first introduced to the world of theoretical physics. After getting his Bachelor of Science degree from City College, he entered a PhD program at MIT. Yet his original intention of continuing research in electrical engineering soon gave way to his rising passion for theoretical concepts. In a typical Mitchell fashion, instead of working towards his engineering degree, he started spending considerable amount of time researching concepts of classic mathematical physics. This eventually led him to change his major to physics. But even after successfully defending his PhD thesis and moving to Cornell for postdoctoral research, his publishing record remained curiously low. Known for his intellectual curiosity and lack of academic discipline, this Renaissance man preferred lavish interiors of New York restaurants to the sterile uniformity of a scientific lab. A loose-end, highbrow conversation accompanied by a glass of wine and cigarettes to an academic discussion about the latest scientific paper. Nevertheless, for many of his friends and colleagues, Mitchell Feigenbaum represented an ideal scientist, a person whose intellectual vigor wouldn't easily collapse under the weight of current paradigms. A passionate mind that could potentially break through the limitations set by scientific establishment and open doors to new ways of understanding the world. Little did they know that these doors would lead to chaos. In the early 1970s, after spending another two long and unproductive years as a researcher at Virginia Tech, Mitchell was offered a long-term position at theoretical division at Los Alamos. This invitation came from his longtime friend, Pete Carruthers. Carruthers would later state that he had a gut feeling that Mitchell would do something great, and that despite other people's advice against it, he had decided to give him a chance. The assignment was not an easy one. Mitchell was expected to crack the code and calculate the transition of stable systems into turbulence, or, to put it in more dramatic terms, compute the onset of chaos. For this purpose, he was given what was at the time considered a state-of-the-art programmable calculator, an HP 65, translated into modern times, a pocket calculator from the 1970s. Surprisingly enough, 
This imperfect device became instrumental in his remarkable discovery. Using his HP-65, Mitchell was able to develop methods capable of modeling the onset of chaos. He managed to confirm that the so-called period doubling transition to chaotic behavior happens in a series of geometrically focused steps, and demonstrated that these steps follow a universal pattern expressed in a number that came to be known as the Feigenbaum's constant, 4.6692. Mitchell's discovery of this constant had many theoretical implications. In the first place, the existence of such universal constant meant that chaos could possibly be quantified. The concept that apparent randomness of chaotic systems may be hiding underlying patterns and self-organizing principles led to the creation of a new field of mathematics now known as chaos theory. I'm still not clear on chaos. Oh, oh, it, 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 it uh, simply uh, deals with uh, predictability in complex systems. In 1979, Mitchell's discovery got its first confirmation in the physical world. Albert Liebschaber reported results on a physical experiment on the transition to turbulence in liquid helium. The transition showed period doublings with exactly the same exponent that Mitchell had calculated back in Los Alamos. Sitting in this behavior, this one precise behavior, at the transition to chaos, appearing, if you will, in embryonic seeds, is every possible behavior that these systems can exhibit. In an instant, Mitchell became famous. In 1984, he was awarded a MacArthur Award. And a couple of years later, in 1986, the prestigious Wolf Prize in Physics until his death in June of 2019, Mitchell Feigenbaum continued to explore many avenues of his discovery. He found original ways to apply them in cartography, financial markets, and other unexpected fields, but also made his peace with academia, where he educated generations of students and encouraged them to find their own way of advancing the progress of science. But there was another darker side to Mitchell's discovery. A theory of it isn't exactly known, but uh, I'll try to end this discussion with a bang. The existence of universal patterns in transition to chaotic motion meant that even the systems that we traditionally consider stable might eventually slip into chaos. Unfortunately, one of those systems is our own, the solar system. Luckily, even if Mitchell's predictions were right, we may have to wait a little longer before we witness the solar system's descent into chaos. In the meantime, all that we can do is sit back and enjoy the ride.